All right. This is chapter Hobbes, Thomas Hobbes. All right. This is an excerpt. In such condition, there is no place for industry, no knowledge of the face of the earth, no account of time, no arts, no letters, no society, and which is worst of all, continual fear and danger of violent death, and the life of man, solitary, poor, nasty, brutish, and etc. All right, check all the correct answers. Believe that without government. So let's see. Is it up here too? Potentially. All right. So without. Basically anything bad gets checked. <laughs> so that one wouldn't have spare time to make things. Yeah, people would constantly fight. Yup. Yup. All right. So we've got. Number one is multiple checks. So everybody would have a right to everything. People wouldn't have spare time. People will constantly fight because they'd be fighting over everything. And there would be a constant state of fear and danger. So this is, let's see. So here's your, like, no account of time. Um, no knowledge of the face of the earth. No industry. So actually doing something, um, like, just in general having a job. Continual fear. So that's all in there. And here's the same thing. And now this is with government. So we're going to check all the good things. There would be more time to work, create, discover. People could expect protection. Rules could be made and enforced. It will give up some power and rights. Power will be held up to them. <laughs> Basically everything except this one here. All right. See, I don't even have to like <laughs> read. <laughs> what does the man in the middle of this picture represent? Anarchy, a monarch made of the people, a monarch made by, made of God, a democracy. So if you look closely, there are little people in, it looks like scales, but these are little people in here. So it is the monarch made of the people. 
Do I actually have to read for this chapter? <laughs> All right. What does it look like the person's doing? So we got a sword. Here's the town. Here's this whatever that is. I have no idea. It looks like some kind of scepter. All right. He's going to run away. Nope. He's going to slay the villagers. Maybe. He's a blacksmith and is giving his giant sword as a gift. <laughs> no. He's guarding. He's guarding and um, guarding and. Ruling over the city, sorry. Yes. yes, this is the correct answer. So, guarding and ruling. Alright, so now we're going to go up and see. So, Hobbes believed that before government, people lived in the state of... Contentment, neutrality, nature, satisfaction. Okay, let's see. Do, 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 do. All right. Thomas Hobbes was an English scholar and philosopher. He was born in 1588 and later became a tutor to a very wealthy family. As a tutor, Hobbes had access to many books, traveled often, and met many important thinkers. Hobbes lived in Paris through the English Civil Wars and was interested in the nature of government. He wrote about many topics, including politics, geometry, physics, religion, and history. Hobbes was one of the many scholars who tried to answer the question, why do we have government? Hobbes saw humans as naturally selfish and quick to fight. He believed that before there were governments, people lived in a state of nature. In a state of nature, everyone had a right to everything. In order to get what they wanted, people would always be at war with everyone else. Nobody would produce anything like inventions, art, or even crops or tools because they would be afraid other people would take them away. Hobbes didn't paint a very pretty picture of life without government. Oh my god. Okay. There we go. Alright, so nature. Hobbes believed a single blank or ruler should have total power. So, czar, sovereign, viceroy, or democracy. Which, by the pictures, you should be able to guess. Alright, social contract. Hobbes lived at a time when many philosophers were thinking about the nature of government. He was one of the first of his era to discuss the idea of a social contract between people and their government. A contract is an agreement in which both sides agree to something in order to reach a shared goal. In Hobbes' view, people agreed to give up some rights and power in exchange for protection. But for Hobbes, the social contract was no two-way street. He believed that once the people agreed to hand over power in exchange for protection, they lost the right to overthrow, replace, or even question the government. So this is how he's going to be different from the other thinkers. Well, one, this is one of it. One of the things. Um, that once you accept whatever government you have, it's that's what you get. All right. Leviathan. Hobbes wrote a book called Leviathan to explain how he thought governments should work. Hobbes wrote Leviathan during the English Civil War. He wrote about the social contract, and he spent much of that book trying to show that a strong central authority was the only way to avoid the evils of war. Hobbes believed a single sovereign or ruler should have total authority over the people. He believed that it, in a monarchy led by he believed in a monarchy led by a king. That's because he thought that government would work best. All the power rested in one place. No three branches for Hobbes. So we should have sovereign for the last one. All right. And I'm going to read this last paragraph. You guys, you can submit or you can wait until I submit to see. All right, monarchy, not democracy. Many political thinkers, including America's founding fathers, built on Hobbes' ideas, especially the idea of social contract. Hobbes was more concerned with protection and order than rights. 
But people like John Locke and John Jacques Rousseau changed the focus from monarchy to democracy, power with the people instead of a sovereign. They began to see people have rights that must be protected even from government. All right. It's good. All right. Sweet. So, yeah, that is it for that chapter.